How are you guys getting on over there in Thailand? You know, it's not bad. Uh, actually, Thailand hasn't been hit very hard by the uh, COVID virus. So, uh, so we're doing good. I mean, all the gyms are closed. Everybody's going crazy, stressed out. Uh, yeah. You, the economy's taking it the worst, though. But as you know, they, they say the Bangkok hospital is, is overflowing, but I think it's been pretty, pretty relatively easy in Thailand. Yeah. So where are you at, bro? Uh, down in London at the moment. Okay, so okay. It's, it's, we're locked down. You yeah. You can't leave our houses unless it's for exercise or you're getting food. You need a good reason to be out. So it is what it wow. is. But it's like you said, people are just going, because you can't do the stuff that keeps you sane, like going to the gym, especially someone like you. He's a Muay Thai fighter. You want to be able to go to the gym. Right, so it kind of right. breaks that routine. Yeah, How are you dealing man. with that? Are you training at home? Yeah, I'm doing a little bit of training. Uh, I'm pretty good training myself. I'm from. Uh, I'm actually from Kansas in America. So there's there's not a lot of Muay Thai. So I'm good at training myself. You know, that's, that's how I started out doing my running, my conditioning, <clears throat> and everything myself. So I'm doing all my calisthenics, all my bar work, getting my road work in. Now the smoky season is uh, has just finished in Chiang Mai, which is horrible. A lot of people don't know about it, but it's like so much smoke outside that you really can't go out much at all. So, uh, yeah. I was, I was watching your fight against uh, Sing Sandek. Is that how you say his name? Sing uh, uh, or Orkiasuk, or Sing Sandek. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I was watching that fight and I got a bet with my wife, right? Because I was like, you throw, like, world-class jabs. Like, your jabs. Me? and uh, Yeah, you. And uh, against, ah, uh, Kray, Kray Tong. Kray Tong. Do you know who I'm? Kray Tong. You stopped Kray him with Tong. a left hook. Even that left yeah. hook, even the way you turned it over. I'm just right. like, that guy's, that guy's boxed before. So I bet her, I was like, I know he's boxed before. Because them jabs, are, they're world-class. Have you boxed before? Thank I have, uh, I've had a couple really, really good boxing coaches and, yeah. and you know what, my boxing has gone down so much. I've been trying to bring it back up, but the ties that, that I train under the, only the good boxers are few and far between. They're more kick heavy elbows, knees, yeah. stuff like this. But actually it's a big thing that I believe that for foreigners, you have to be the better boxer against these yeah. ties because like my boxing has gone down so much but you see i still get these 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 punches off you know with you i'm assuming you go to the same gym and that's something i want to talk to you about training in thailand and then coming yeah. from the u.s but like uh you get used to, you've got training part partners and you kind of you're helping each other that's what it's really about i'll right. tell you a, a little story actually i tried muay thai once okay and, um it was while I was boxing, I went into a Muay Thai gym. I was like, because my dad done Muay Thai when I was young. It kind of got me into boxing because I was watching boxing probably about, I don't know, eight, nine. And I thought it was Muay Thai. <laughs> and right, then I just okay. got addicted to that. But um, wow. I tried going Muay Thai and we were just playing around. You know how you just play? I think they do it in Thailand a lot where you're not actually, but it's just timing, getting your timing down. Yeah, it's, it's, and, it's uh, we, a lot of play. Yeah, and we were playing and he kicked me on the outside of my uh, quad. And I remember it wasn't the it was the conditioning of his leg, and I was okay. like, "Yeah, I'm not coming back." <laughs> it was just unbelievable, just the way you guys are conditioned. That's the thing with Muay Thai, where I'm just like, "Wow, the conditioning of these guys is insane." Is that something it's, you kind of realized when you went to Thailand that the conditioning? Yeah, it's the uh, it's the training and the lifestyle. Like these dudes have it so much more than us. But like me, I started later on in life. So by the time I kind of get it a in better shape now than these guys are because they take so much damage in their teenage teenage years fighting at Lumpini that they're a little battered by the time they're my age. You know, they're already teaching and opening gyms. But uh, yeah, man, uh, I'm sorry. What was your question? No, the conditioning. So... Because, um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. It's uh, it's the six days a week, two times a day. You know, long runs in the morning. Some gyms they start out. You know, some gyms are really customer friendly in Thailand, 
some some fighter gyms they start out you know 5 30 6 in the morning and, and your coach is yelling at you you know if you don't want to train you go home they say my son clap band bye my son wow. clap band bye you don't want to train you go home no train go home bye you know so you start off the morning like that and uh you know it's it's almost like a boot camp but they whip you i've had coaches wow. down in phuket i've had coaches down in phuket tell me you know sit the whole fight the whole pro team down and say you know if you guys don't fight good i can slap you you know and this is what this one coach believed because i, I guess they were having problems with fighters with a, uh, a brazilian that had given up in a couple fights and this oh. uh this coach i won't say his name he's really famous and phuket he, he kind of slapped this brazilian around and he said you know i'm hard on you guys because i want you to do well but it's just, you know, three hour practices twice a day, thousands of kicks. They have the ties. Their way of training is so good, but it's it's hard on the body uh, because it's, you know, they they don't believe. I don't know if they know the concept of overtraining and modern sports physiology and things like this. You know what I mean? So uh, it's it's really long and hard conditioning, and it's about not giving up. So the way the ties get people is their balance is so good, and their single shot accuracy is so good. That's the difference between Muay Thai and kickboxing. So you might be physically in better shape than that tie. You might have had better cardio, more strength, but the tie's balance is better. So he's going to kick you hard in the beginning and try to overwhelm you. But the secret is, if you push that tie past the third round, then you're going to have the advantage because you're in better physical shape and, and, and probably stronger because you haven't fought three times this month. You see what that's, I'm saying? That's one thing. I, like, um, one thing I want to ask you was, because you're from Kansas, um, and you, I was going to ask you, well, how did you find Muay Thai? But it sounded like you were just self-training. Is that well, what you said earlier? Yeah, I, uh, when I was younger, I started out wrestling. My dad was a wrestling coach, and then I had kind of got taken out for getting in trouble when I was, you know, younger. And uh, and I, I was always fighting. I always was like a rough kid. I like playing like that. And I had gotten in trouble in 2015. I ended up coming home from prison. And my sister's ex... Uh, my sister and this dude, Matt Murray, have, have a kid, my nephew. So when I got out, uh, I hit Matt up or he hit me up or something. And he was like, hey, I'm doing MMA, MMA now and invited me to come train. And like I was all about lifting weights and doing burpees, you know what I mean? So uh, I'm like, yeah, I'll go train with you guys. And uh, uh, I'm thinking we're going to start sparring, right? And they, they set me up on the speed bag. And, and that was the first, you know, couple weeks was just a speed bag, the double end bag. And I'm like, guys, when are we going to punch each other? But <clears throat> Matt and his new wife, Julie, they got me set up right. They got me running long distances every day. And uh, I was training for MMA. My first fight happened to be a kickboxing fight. I wanted MMA. And then I just got into kickboxing because I'm like, I'm going to I'm going to focus on kickboxing. And then, you know, I had been fighting for about a year, uh, amateur, and uh, I wasn't in the best relationship. I had this girlfriend, and I just remember, like, being on YouTube and seeing a show called Phuket Dreaming about a Phuket top team. Mm -hmm. And they were like, Thailand's cheap. This is fight paradise. Like, you can, we can get you fights. You can live over here. You can be a sponsored fighter. And I did my research on it, and... Uh, just like started telling people I was going to go to Thailand and like sure enough, like it happened. And I, I was over here two months, my first time and fought and I won. So did you not yeah. do any Muay Thai training before you went to Thailand? I, I, I wasn't doing Muay Thai training. I was doing kickboxing yeah. amateur in Kansas, which Kansas, that region of America, right? America's so behind on Muay Thai compared to the UK or Australia. Um, <clears throat> but we're wrestlers in that region. You know what I'm saying? So, like, 
there's good MMA, but like, mo- and there's good boxing there. There is good boxing, but most of the strikers there are garbage. I was pretty shit. I thought I was so good because I was undefeated amateur, like eight and zero my first time in Thailand. But the Thai training is is they spar every day. Also, that's the other thing they spar and clinch every day. So uh, it's got to be more playful, more technical. So when you come in, you know, trying come in, it's your first time in Thailand. Like you, you're trying to get sponsored at this first gym. You want to hit it big, so you want to show them how good you are. And these Thai dudes are just ragdolling you, sweeping you, clinching you. The harder you try, it's like the more the the deeper you're getting yourself into a, a worse and worse position. And uh, I, I wasn't ready for it at all. And and it, dude, it kills you at first, man. I was gonna ask you, you know, the clinching. What, yeah. how, what did you when you the clinching must have been in because in tight like down in the UK I don't know what it's like up in Kansas but in the UK they don't clinch as much for some reason right. people do Muay Thai but they just don't clinch as much as as much as they do in Thailand so right people that I know that have been to Thailand the first thing they say is they clinch a lot yeah. a lot more than you expect so how did you adjust to that then man uh, clinching that's that's the hardest thing you. People don't practice clinching over there because people don't like clinching. They, they don't score clinching in the West, you know. We avoid it in the West, even in kickboxing. So, uh, no, dude, it's hard. And I really, you know, went through some gyms and, and got killed at the better gyms. But the gym I really made my come up in, Hong Tong Muay Thai, uh, here in Chiang Mai, um, that is a heavy clinching gym. Anybody from this gym... Uh, that's been at this gym for a long time is really good uh, clinching. And these guys killed me, man. It's it's not like getting beat up physically, you know, which is you kind of feel, you know, like you got slapped in the face when somebody puts hands on you and sparring, you know. But clinching is like another dude just physically handling you, slamming you around, kneeing you to the body. And uh, you you just totally have to humble yourself. Normally, clinching's at the second half of practice after you do bag work, pad work, you're, you're running and everything, your warm-up. So you've already been there for an hour, burned out on the pads, and then uh, clinching, right, at the end of practice. And it's long rounds, and uh, you have to adjust, but you do it every day. And uh, I realized in one fight I was actually fighting at Lumpini Stadium. I didn't... I didn't my fight previous to Lumpini, I lost on points. I was fighting at a festival in Lampang, and I lost on points. The guy beat me in clinching, so I was like, "All right, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna train as much clinching this month as I can." I fought at Lumpini, and I fought a bigger, stronger opponent from uh, Sit Manchai Muay Thai gym uh, outside of Bangkok. It's it's pretty famous. Kevin Ross trained there. Willie Whipple, some some other guys. So. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, I started sweeping this dude and landing knees, landing elbows. I cut him, and I eventually won on points. And uh, my coach in, like, round two, he was telling me, no clinch, no clinch. And, like, round one, because the guy kept trying to clinch me. And uh, my coach is, no clinch, no clinch. But by the end of round two, my coach is in the corner like, okay, you can clinch now. You're better. You see now. He's like, just pick him apart. When he clinches, turn. And uh, I swept the dude so, so beautifully, you know, and uh, for my first time, you know, it's probably not much in hindsight, but uh, so, and then, and then, then I realized like, that's the secret. That's the secret because you can, you can, in Muay Thai, you can play this long cat and mouse game, you know, with a good jab and a good uh, push kick, a good teep, you know, and, and just kind of pick guys apart. And then w- when they try to pressure you, you can clinch, turn them. You can get elbows and knees off. and uh, Or if you get tired, you may need to clinch. But the clinch is, it's the ties secret. Not a lot of Westerners know it, and the ties know it. So that's normally where they'll kill you at, you know. Yeah, like when I watched you, right, because I've been watching, your, it, your fight's out super entertaining as well and this is what bothers me about like uh well, i don't know why muay thai isn't more popular like people yeah. i think are getting to like finding it a lot more now because of mma and people are watching like people like john jones and that's muay thai so they start looking right. into it more so i'm hoping at some point 
it becomes as popular as, you know, because you've got guys playing games and they're getting millions of views online. So oh, yeah. I think Muay Thai should be like so much more popular. But um, I forgot totally what I was going to say to you. <laughs> oh, that's what I was going to yeah. say to you. When I was watching you fight, um, one thing I noticed and I didn't expect at all is that you was dominant in the clinches. You seem much stronger you, than the guys you're that you're against. And I'm not used to seeing that against a, a Western guy against Thai fighters. Right. Does that make sense? So yeah. I was like, what? It's, just, it's a crazy combination. Because like I said, your, your jab and stuff like that is, is, is world class. And you're dominant in the clinches. What, you. What, what, was you, have you always just had this natural... Was you just naturally... Did you feel naturally stronger because you're wrestling or something like that? I don't know where that... Do you know where that stems from? Man, you know what? Like, growing up fighting, like... I got, like, me and my friends used to have a fight club. When we saw that movie Fight Club, after school, we used to have, a, like, a legit fight club where we used to just, like, like wrestle and slap each other and stuff. It, you know, but uh, actually, I lost way more street fights than I won. And uh, it wasn't until, like, I'd become an adult that, you know, that I had a pretty good record, but... No, man, like coming up, I always felt that I could like looking like after I just lost a fight as a kid, it's like, damn, I lost that fight, you know, but thinking in, in my head is like, well, I probably could have won if I tried, but, but no, de definitely I, I built myself up and, and everything that I have now as good, good, good as it is now, I've worked hard on every little technique, man, for the last, the last over four years now training twice a day. You know, what was that like coming from like Kansas? Because say I know you did do Muay Thai in Kansas, but say you do anything, uh, it's usually you go to work, you go to the gym for an hour, you go home. Do you know what I mean? And then when you go to Thailand, you're going twice a day. It's it's a lifestyle now. What's yeah, that? Like it's a big shock. It, it it was a big shock uh, the first time I came out because it's it, it's freedom. It's freedom here, bro. If, you talk to anybody that's been to Thailand, they're going to tell you they love it, man, because the country's so open. There are some negative things about living here, like you have to arrange a visa, you have to, uh, you know, traffic, things like this, you know. But uh, it was a huge shock, man. And uh, actually, man, coming out here to Thailand is one of the best things that, that I did because Kansas has a lot of good people, but the culture in Kansas... It's not like anything like it's so it feels so stagnant to me in Kansas. You know, it's such a small area and the people that I've met in Thailand and, you know, I've my 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 girls Thai. We have a baby like all the monks I've talked to, the cool people I've met, the fights I've been in now is like if, if anybody's listening, man, get out, go see the world. Every young person should be traveling Southeast Asia, bro. I mean, it, at least for a summer to see the world. And you can still do it really cheap here. Yeah, one of the things I want to do is come to Thailand and, and cover Muay Thai. Because I think Muay Thai is such a beautiful sport. And you got, like you said about the kids that, you know, by 20, early 20s, you've had over 100 professional fights. These guys are yeah. training from so early. I think uh, Muay Thai is such an interesting sport. And like he was saying earlier, you know, travel the world and get out there. For you, I didn't know about your story about coming out of prison and stuff like that, but uh, sports, you know, combat sports especially gives you that discipline, you know, that routine. Yeah. So you're a great example of someone that can, you know, really change their life around it. End up in Thailand, do so well in Muay Thai. It's, it's, like, a, it's, a, it's like a movie. You, you need it, bro. It's just like Tyson Fury said, you know, like when he doesn't train, he suffers from mental illness. You know what I mean? And Joe Rogan, they all talk about the same idea that like people are, are meant to like we're we're meant to adapt and survive, you know. So when people are, are in these nice houses, comfortable eating steak every night, you know, they're they're not burning these calories they're not uh, getting this energy out. So, of course, they feel anxiety, you know, which grows into all these circumstances in their life. And people can't even be alone with themselves nowadays. You know, I mean, like, I see it like even even in my girl, like, like people start to freak out just to be alone with their loved ones. And I'm like, 
you know, like, like nothing bad, you know, and you spend enough time around anybody. It's fair enough. You'll get irritated. You know what I mean? But it's like, people should know, like, if you think doing time with your family is bad, try doing it time without your family. It's a lot worse, you know, yeah, believe yeah, yeah. it or not. It's a lot worse. That's crazy. Think, as that so. I think like going to so you do Muay Thai, you know, that it's like, a, it's like known a secret. So, like, see how we're, like, here, we're quarantined. We can't go anywhere. We're stuck to it together. But when you start feeling a bit, you know, I'm trying to think of the word, you get a bit stressed out if you're not working out. Me, I, I was one of them gym rats. I was in the gym every morning at 5 o'clock. My routine right. messed up when it's this quarantine game because that routine, I can't go to the gym no more. But I know right. once I started, when it started to get really bad, I was like, man, I'm, you get a bit lost. But you go for a run and you get, it's like a secret. You get them endorphins going and you start yeah. doing routine. So, I feel like uh, that's important too, just getting out there. So that's like surviving, you know, when you way yeah. back in archaic times, she was running, them endorphins would kick in. Do you know what I mean? It, so I think it it's is, important bro. too. It is, bro, because like there, there's one really good author I like, bro, called James Allen. And uh, he's like one of the first authors in the self-help genre, right? He wrote a book called As a Man Thinketh. And that book is like 90 pages, bro. It's so short, but it basically says, as a man thinketh in your in his heart, then so he is, you know, what you think you become and your mind controls, the, you know, mind is the master and man, man controls mind, you know, a lot of people let their mind control them. So what he says, is, how, how do we control ourselves? How do we control our mind? And he was like, the first thing you have to do is you have to discipline your body. So that has to be a constant pursuit, you know, and then he's like, you have to discipline your tongue and you guys like, basically you have to stop saying stupid stuff. And then, then you can begin to discipline your mind. And when a, when a, a negative thought comes, like a big thing I've been dealing with in quarantine is my diet. You know, I've been fasting. I've been fasting because at the beginning, my diet was getting out of hand. Right. I like to eat a little <laughs> bit. So you got a sweet tooth. Uh, yeah, so he's so he says, uh, oh, for sure, I got a sweet tooth. So he says, uh, <laughs> you know, eventually when, you, when you've controlled your body and, and the way you speak, then you can label these thoughts that come when you're hungry. You say, no, I'm, I'm just bored, you know what I mean? And uh, you correct these ways of thinking, you know. But it all starts, it all starts from the, the discipline of the body first, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because... Because the body is the is the animal. It's the animal within you. And if, if, if you believe, I don't necessarily believe in these old teachings, but there's these old Egyptian hermetic teachings that, that believe that aliens crossbred other aliens with animals. And that's why humans have this these anim, animal emotions like anger and lust and stuff. But we also have the design, divine spark to control the anger. And, and the lust and, and all these things, you know what I'm saying? And, Do you feel uh, like... Oh, sorry, mate. No, you're good, bro. I'm just rambling. No, no, it's good. I was going to say to you, and do you feel like... Because I feel like this as well, you know, going boxing and uh, trying... Doing all these other things, you doing Muay Thai, it gives you that extra level, though. Does that make sense? So you kind of can tackle things. So you still yeah. staying in there when you... When you're, everything in your body's telling you, ah, we should really, you know, call it a quit now. But you push through that. So I feel like, say going fast and then you're hungry, it, that's kind of, it's tough, but you tell yourself, just keep going. Does that make, do you understand what I'm trying to? Yeah. What, what you're saying is exactly right. And what it is, is like, anytime they, so the hunger, the hunger is, is the base emotion. That's the low, that's the lower, uh, not emotion, but. Uh, that's the, the hunger is the feeling that comes that we need to control, right? So every time you say no to that hunger and every time you stick it out and go a little bit longer, you're becoming mentally stronger over that hunger, right? And I, at the other side of the coin, if you go if you go down to the bakery every time you get hungry and get some cakes, you know what I'm saying, and some crackers and stuff, you know, then, then you're getting weaker every time, you know? And, uh, yeah, man, uh, I, I've been doing a lot of thinking, uh, about it, you know, recently on this, on this lockdown and like people get, 
you you have to take things away like you never find the answers in your life about giving yourself more you know what i'm saying like yeah. you have to yeah. you have to take things away to really understand and uh uh, one one of the things about Thailand that's really big to me about Thailand is the Buddhist culture. Like people, life's slower here. People really aren't as ambitious. Like people aren't trying to go and be millionaires like necessarily here. Like people are happy working and getting their small wage a day and just having what they need. But the, the thing about the Buddhist culture is uh, they say life's about suffering. And Buddhism is how you conquer that suffering and find peace. You know what I mean? And uh, if you look at the monks, even uh, Catholics, and I'm pretty sure almost every religion, uh, they, they talk about renouncing the, uh, the pleasures of life. You know, like uh, sexual pleasures, drugs, uh, emotional uh, uh, pleasures and things like this, you know. And this is this is really how you have to get to the top, and it, and it all connects back to Muay Thai, and that the people in the West don't really know when you're training twice a day, six days a week, your everything you do is about the gym. Like you're waking up at a certain time, you're not eating before training, or maybe you do eat before training, but you you do these things so you can train to a top level because you know you're gonna have two and a half, three hours in the morning. And you don't want to go, you know, if, if it's at the end of your fight camp, you're, you're hurt, you're tired. And so then after training, you know, you shower, you eat lunch, and then you don't have a snack after that. Cause you know, when you're hitting pads, you're going to have to throw up. And it's like the diet, the, uh, belief in yourself, the conditioning, the technique, everything has got to be on point to get that progress for those six days you train you know because a lot of times when I was training back in the west I was like hard sparring uh not running much I was training maybe even training a little bit harder for a shorter amount of time but I wasn't training correctly and I wasn't eating right and I, I wasn't really seeing the progress that way you know but the, the real thing, the real thing about training six days a week is, is it's a lonely life, bro. People don't really understand it, man. Some of these fights, you show up to this fight, it looks good on TV, but it's just some little back alley stadium. I mean, we love it because it's, it's, it's a like battleground place for Muay Thai, you know what I mean? But you go in there, you, you might get your head cut open round number one and for a hundred bucks pay, you know? Like, you really have to love it, but it, it can be lonely at times, bro. Really lonely, you know. I can imagine. The thing is, um, I was wondering, is someone like a, like you at your level, and you kind of skimmed over it earlier, just going to the gym, you know, twice a day, six times a week. I'm just like, when you get to a certain level, what keeps you going? Because you, you're at a level where you kind of reach the pinnacle. What keeps you going? Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Man, you know what? I, I know exactly what you're saying. After that fight, after that fight with uh, Ork Yasa, Sing Sandech at Top King, I was like, I was like, woo, you got that. Because I, I went into that fight thinking I was going to lose. I, I had fought for that promoter in China before, and I actually got cut on my head right here. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, I can see but, that. Uh, I lost, and uh, I know the promoter, Ork Yassik was a promoter's fighter, and uh, I knew it was going to be a hard fight, and I figured, you know, I, I've only been fighting three years at that point. Uh, I'm the underdog, you know, so I was like, I'm going to go all out. I don't care. So I won that fight, and I was like, afterwards felt like so good about it. I was like, oh, you can chill for a while. You can chill, right? And I, I was going to chill. I got offered another fight against a really good, uh, one of the best Chinese guys. He beat me. We, we got a draw and then a bonus round. He beat me. And then I dislocated my shoulder and I couldn't train. It was the biggest injury I had. And like, I realized, bro, that uh, I was addicted to the, uh, the glory, I guess. The glory is one thing. I mean, you know, anybody's going to tell you, you know, you feel good about yourself 
in the gym every day when you're working towards these goals. And then when you get it, I mean, you feel like the king, you know? Uh, and, you know, I do, I do a lot of it for my daughter now too, but like, I was like, I was like, man, you know, so that, that, that's one thing that happened. And, and I rehabbed my shoulder. It took me about three months. And, uh, then I went back to Phuket to train, right? Well, because once you, when you look at it from the point that you've reached the mountaintop, which I honestly, I haven't at all, bro. I'm a good B level Muay Thai fighter as far as like the top elite guys you know what i mean but i'm 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 just beginning but uh but when but I, I did have that attitude that i was like so good and it's hard to stay ambitious at that point you know what i mean and like you're always competing with dudes it's, it's not a good mind frame to stay in the learning process you know what i mean but i i was humbled by the injuries, my body was breaking down, I, I, cuts all over my face. And I was like, okay, you just need to humble yourself and get back in the gym. And uh, I did, man, and, and basically started over. And now my shoulder's really strong. And I got some pretty good momentum going uh, just before this COVID, this whole COVID situation. So the, the thing is, I watched your fight against. Uh... To be honest with you, I was trying to find out if you boxed before because I just couldn't believe how just how good your jab and your your crosses, everything was just it was world class. So I was like, let me see if I can find some boxing. If this guy boxing, and um, I came across a fight with Olinson, I think his name is. It was a Whoa. it was a kickboxing fight, I think. Oh, no, no, it was a Muay Thai oh, fight. Oh, oh Trevor, Trevor Olinson. I feel like it was a Muay Thai fight, wasn't it? Yeah, I uh, yeah. I it was in a cage, right? Yeah, and then uh, I was watching it, and uh, I could tell that you was kind of. I think it was second round. You could tell you was you was tight, but you yeah, were yeah. pushing through that. And uh, right. I was like, "Yeah, this guy is world class." And then I could kind of see the progression where your technical ability was catching up to that will. Does that make uh, sense? And then the first thing, because when I watch fights, I think mentality is a huge factor. You know, your mentality oh, yeah. is huge, and. Um, a lot of these guys, when I watch them, especially at a top level, I think, what do they do it for? Does that make? Because if you're doing it for yourself or whatever, I, I feel like that kind of gets you so far. And then you mentioned your daughter, and I was like, oh, is that what? If yeah. you believe in that kind of concept where you got to do it for more than just winning, man, you know, you mean? know, man, one of the best boxing coaches I ever had is a dude named Austin Ford. Shout out Austin Ford, uh, Kansas City, Missouri. He used to own Brass Boxing, right? And uh, I had joined his gym. And this was the type of a boxing coach, man. He was just a player, bro. Like, older, older, light-skinned black dude, you know? And, like, he was just, he could tell, very intelligent. He could tell you something and just have you do it while you're sparring during the round, you know? And he, he could just tap in, to, to me anyway, he could just tap into my mind and, like, one day he was wrapping somebody's hands and uh, we were all sitting there as a team before one of these local fights. And he was like, you know, you uh, I'm like, I said something like somebody said, do it for the haters or something. Do it for your girlfriend. And he was like, you know, that's all really bullshit. And we're like, what? And he's like, yeah, you can't do it for your mom. He's like, you know, or, or what do you say? Oh, oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I, I had it backwards. He said, he said. You know, people always say, do it for yourself. Do it for yourself. That's bullshit. He's like, you're going to give up on yourself. You'll be all right. It's just a fight. He's like, you'll be all right. You know, you'll you'll go home, you'll eat, and you'll feel better the next day, you know. But he's like, if you do it for that one person, you know, that one girl you don't want to uh, upset, you want to impress whatever, he's like, do it for that one person because for them you'll die. You know, he says his whole point is, you know, people won't really do it for themselves, but it might take somebody else at some specific point of time in your life to give you the motivation to for you to hit that next level and walk through fire, so to speak, to do whatever you have to do, you know. And when he said that, I was like, you know, that's 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 got a lot of truth to it, you know. Yeah, yeah. I believe uh, in that as well. The, the other thing with me is, like, 
when when I start when I made the decision to fight, uh, I'm still in pretty much the same decision, like still in pretty much the same position. Uh, I I remember I was I was hitting the speed bag in the morning with Matt and Julie, the my sister's ex, and uh, I had a shitty job in a factory just out of prison. I was actually on parole. I was like staying in a hotel, bro. I mean, it it, it was a mess at that point. You know what I mean? And uh, I was just getting my life together. And I was like, you know, I got to go work in this factory. I was like, man, I can't keep things together just so I can go to work in a factory. I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the speed bag. I'm like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be a fighter. And it's still true to this day that I really don't have anything else, bro. Like I not, now I have my family. So I do a lot of it for them. You know, a man can die for his family, you know, oh, yeah. easy. That, that's a, that's a plenty of motivation, but other, the motivation also is like, I need fighting to get me to that next thing in life. Because if I retire as a, I mean, there's no retirement plan for a 30 year old fighter, 35, you know? So you either have to save your money and invest in some businesses or open a gym or be smart somehow. Cause a lot of these dudes are getting this brain damage and not getting paid, you know? So then in life, they, they, they can't figure things out later in life, you know, because they didn't make good decisions. So now fighting is the one thing, the one thing I have other than just working a blue collar job now at this point, like if, if fighting's over with Corona now, I just go back to Kansas and, you know, get a, get a house with my family and normal jobs. So. I'm sure I'm, I'm hoping it'll be back. I'm sure it'll be back. I'm sure. Oh yeah. But what's what's what would you all kind of, would you open a gym or something like that? Is that something? Cause that's huge in, um, in town, isn't it? Like yeah, owning it, a gym is a big thing. Oh yeah, man. It's, it's money over here. And I've seen like, I've seen like one of, one of the older Ferran guys over here, foreign guys, uh, Eddie uh, Farrell, he's an Australian guy, him and his girl, Brooke, they just opened a gym in Phuket and, uh, like they did it. They were actually went there to train at a gym and like the police closed that gym down and like the mafia had to like run the fighters off. It was, it was, it was a shady deal with this gym. So they were down there kind of, uh, without a gym. So they just opened their gym and, uh, I've always wanted to open a gym, but I'm thinking about it so much nowadays because in Thailand it's money, man. I mean, wh what do you pay for a, a monthly membership at, at a boxing gym? And you can uh, it depends which one you're going to, but down here is quite, pretty expensive as well. The one I went to is ninety pounds a, a month. So I don't know 90, what that is that ninety pounds a month. And in dollars, that's, what's that's like a hundred dollars? Hundred and ten dollars or something like that. Hundred yeah. dollars, let's round it down. For a really good gym in Kansas, it's like you know, you might pay a hundred dollars a month, you know, for like jujitsu, MMA, Muay Thai and, and like conditioning stuff. Yeah. full membership in thailand full membership to a gym is going to be at least 300 dollars, bro uh and you're wow. getting so many tourists come just for just to do tourism is a huge business here and like muay thai adapted the same sales principles that like all these the elephant farms have uh all these other, uh, you know, like kayaking, whatever the other shit people do is besides Muay Thai in Thailand, you know. But uh, so like the gyms here are very expensive and the, t the top gyms in Bangkok are like 600 a month to train at, bro. I never would have thought that ever. It's That's it's insane. crazy. The, the gym I train at now is like the golden standard for authentic Thai Muay Thai, like I'm one of the only foreign dudes in there. It's it's all these biggest fighters you see on like one FC, uh, Lumpini champions. Like I could go down the list and name them, but I'll, I'll actually shoot you their page, their Instagram page after we get off. But so many champions right. at this gym, but, uh, it took me so long to get to this gym because it's so expensive. I just couldn't afford it. And, uh, right, right before, right before, uh, covid situation i actually like talked to him and trained there for paid to train there for a week 
and showed them I was pretty good. And they, they worked a little bit of a deal out with me. So when, when the COVID situation goes back to normal, I'll, I'll go back to Bangkok to PK. That must be pretty exciting. Yeah, dude. I mean, dude, it was a dream to go there. And I'm like, man, I'm here now. And then yeah. it's like, it's like, eh, it's sorry. We're shutting things down. That, that's, uh, and the thing is, if you train with, you know, the, the, you can only be as good as the people you train with, right? So right. That, would kind of, that would raise your levels up as well. Man, and it's it's even more than the people you train with. It's always the coaches, bro. Like, if you have a, a really good coach, they call them Cruz or Arjans over here. But if you have a really good coach, man, that believes in you that and, and actually knows what they're teaching, you know, dude, you can go so far, bro. You can go so far. I, th I think that's the most important thing. And like, that's the one thing that I haven't ha I haven't had a custody and motto for like years to like stick with me for years, you know. So I, I think I think if a fighter can get under a really really good coach, that's the most important thing. But yeah, you got to have sparring partners, you know. But you can always go to go to your your friend's gym across town if if you need to, you know. But as far as PK goes, everything's there. You have like the most famous ties, top notch foreigners coming in, and the best coaches. They actually have a uh, WBC uh, boxing champion named Pajai. He's Thai working there. Uh, oh. Yeah, he's, he he's, he's really, yeah he, well, he, he's a, a trainer there. Oh, wicked. Yeah, his, his, his Muay Thai style is like combo boxing followed by low kicks. They call it Muay Mat style, but very aggressive, no moving back, and just like, you know – uh, cross hook, cross low kick. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's basic, simple stuff. You know. I feel like um, see your because I didn't know about your story, but it's an awesome story. I feel like if pe more I'm hoping people, a lot of people hear this and they get to learn from someone like you who's picked up Muay Thai. See Muay Thai. Muay Thai is I admire Muay Thai fighters a lot because Muay Thai is a kind of sport where it's not. You look at Floyd Mayweather and you're like, I want to get loads of money. Does that make sense? It's good because it gets yeah. people in the gym and people fall in love yeah. with the sport and they realize what the sport's actually about. But Muay Thai is you do it because you love it. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, um, you have to. It's nice to see someone like you that's, you know, found Muay Thai, fell in love with it. It's turned, it's turned, you've achieved a lot. And when I watch your fights, it's, um, you, I literally am blown away how good, especially you, like in the clinches, how you put your boxing into it. It's awesome, man. And I'm not blowing smoke. I genuinely think that. Um, so you, I feel like your story is awesome, man. I feel, and being in Thailand, living the dream, that's what, how many people can say they live their dream? Not, not so many, bro. And that, that's, that's why I don't want to give up on this far in, you know what I mean? That's, you hit it on the head with that one, because that's, that's another main motivational factor for me right there, you know? So. It's been, it's I, been awesome speaking to you, man, honestly. Thank you, oh, brother, man. Awesome, man. You're such a good dude.